It seems that the word impossible doesn't exist in SpaceX's vocabulary. After building Starship, the world's most powerful and largest rocket, the company's now developed an even bigger next-generation version, doubling the size of its predecessor. Of course, this isn't Starship V2 or V3 that we often hear about. It's an entirely new iteration, Starship 4.0. So, what does this next-generation spacecraft look like, and why does SpaceX need such a massive rocket? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. But first, we need your support. Our next goal is 120,000 subscribers. Let's hit that subscribe button, and you won't miss out on any of our upcoming episodes. Of course, we'll strive to get better in every way, and we thank you so much for being here. Starship is the spacecraft by SpaceX designed to be a colossal rocket system capable of complete reusability, offering lower costs and more frequent flights to conquer Mars. Since 2019, this rocket has been emerging like a silver sentinel made of stainless steel, reflecting the sunlight from a launch site in South Texas along the Gulf of Mexico. The vehicle features aerodynamic fins that will be needed to navigate Mars' atmosphere upon landing. This version of Starship will also feature a heat shield to cross the atmosphere on Mars and upon return to Earth. It's designed to carry out frequent voyages to enable a spacefaring civilization. When SpaceX introduced the first versions of Starship, like V2 and V3, we saw the company's extraordinary ability to innovate and maximize the spacecraft's potential. These versions weren't just bigger in size, they also boasted impressive payload capacities. V2 could carry up to 100 tons, and V3 took that number beyond 200 tons, a capability that the competition only dreams of. Quite frankly, no other company has gotten to SpaceX's level but they certainly don't intend to stop trying. That's what makes V2 and V3 the true stars of this program. But there's another standout in the making, and that's Starship 4.0. This new version of Starship promises to make waves across the world if it ever comes to fruition. Even without considering the advanced technical upgrades inside, the sheer size of Starship 4.0 is already astonishing. In the past, Elon hinted at the next-generation Starship featuring an incredible 18-meter diameter twice the width of the current design. This upgrade not only surpasses the first stage of Saturn V, 10 meters, and the Soviet N-1 rocket, 17 meters, but also makes it the widest rocket ever built. Notably, the smallest Orion project design featured a diameter of roughly 17 meters and a mass of 300 tons, referred to as the Orion satellite, suggesting that Starship 2.0 would not only match but significantly surpass the payload diameter and cargo capacity needed to launch a complete Orion satellite. With an 18-meter diameter, twice that of the predecessor, many will recall that doubling the diameter of a circle quadruples its area, meaning that a four-fold increase in cargo capacity for a vehicle of the same height allows the version of Starship to transport four times as much cargo or passengers than your current model. Imagine launching a whole space station in just one mission. However, such a massive leap in size also requires proportional increase in fuel and structural weight, demanding a corresponding boost in thrust. The current Super Heavy booster, powered by 33 Raptor V2 engines, each generating 230 tons of thrust, already gives an unmatched liftoff capability, but for an 18-meter wide Starship, SpaceX might need over 130 engines. But there's more. With the thrust of Raptor 3 increasing to 280 tons and a planned upgrade to 300, the next-gen Starship could achieve the required thrust with fewer engines. Elon might even introduce an entirely newer, larger engine with a more powerful turbine, reducing complexity and maintenance when managing hundreds of engines per flight. At this point, many might wonder, why would SpaceX and Elon build such an enormous rocket? The answer lies in SpaceX's ultimate goal, colonizing Mars. Establishing a permanent settlement on Mars will require transporting massive amounts of cargo and thousands of people. SpaceX envisions launching a thousand starships during each 26-month Mars transfer window. But this ambitious plan demands thousands of orbital refueling missions just to fuel those ships in space, and that's an unprecedented logistical challenge. A bigger starship could significantly simplify this. In fact, Elon's 2016 interplanetary transport mission ITS proposal with a 12-meter diameter already hinted at his intention to scale beyond current Starship. An 18-meter version could carry four times the payload, reducing the number of Starships needed for Mars missions from 1,000 to just 250 per synod. Likewise, the number of tanker flights could drop by over 3,750, possibly eliminating the need for orbital refueling depots altogether. This scale-up wouldn't just make Mars colonization more feasible, it would also streamline resource allocation for moon missions. 
Building a sustainable Mars colony requires more than just sending people there. Infrastructure, habitats, food supplies, and equipment must all be transported in bulk. A larger starship would meet those demands, enabling fewer launches while ensuring the settlement has everything needed for long-term survival. Additionally, an 18-meter starship could revolutionize moon missions by delivering a whole base of infrastructures in a single flight, accelerating our efforts to establish a permanent human presence on the moon. Next-gen Starship's not just about size, it's also about capability. With its immense cargo capacity, unprecedented thrust, and groundbreaking efficiency, the 18-meter Starship will redefine space exploration and push the boundaries of what's possible. Whether it's on Mars, the Moon, or beyond, the colossal spacecraft could reshape humanity's place in the cosmos. While the benefits of bigger, taller, and wider rockets are clear, they also come with several logistical challenges. First is your structural and transportation challenges. Bigger rockets require stronger materials and more advanced engineering to maintain structural integrity under the immense pressures and stresses of launch and space travel. Additionally, transporting these massive structures from the manufacturing site to the launch pad presents significant hurdles. Roads, bridges, and other infrastructure might not be designed to accommodate such massive cargo, necessitating alternative transport methods like ships or specially designed vehicles. The second is the manufacturing and infrastructure requirements. Building bigger spacecraft will also require substantial upgrades to SpaceX's production facilities. Assembly lines, tooling, and manufacturing buildings like those at Boca Chica must be capable of handling the increased size of new Starship variants. This could involve expanding existing facilities, constructing new buildings, and upgrading machinery to process bigger components. Furthermore, launch infrastructure, including launch towers and transport systems, will need to be scaled up to support bigger rockets. Finally, there are economic and practical considerations. Beyond the physical challenges, the economic impact of scaling up production also needs to be considered. The costs associated with manufacturing larger rockets, upgrading infrastructure, and solving logistical transport issues can be immense. Balancing these expenses with the expected benefits of enhanced mission capabilities is crucial for the viability of larger Starship variants. Honestly, the potential of larger spacecraft is enormous, but it comes with limitations requiring SpaceX to either modify or completely redesign its program. However, if SpaceX can successfully create bigger Starship rockets, both in height and width, it would mark the beginning of a new golden era of planetary exploration. Interestingly, the idea of a massive rocket was not originally conceived by Elon Musk. In the history of aerospace, there was once a similar project known as Sea Dragon, an ambitious and unique attempt to develop a massive rocket. Sea Dragon was first proposed by Robert Truax, an aerospace engineer for Aerojet back in 1962. A study produced by Aerojet the following year demonstrated that there were no technical obstacles to building such a launch vehicle, even considering the state of rocket design in the early 1960s. Sea Dragon was conceptualized as a two-stage vehicle with extraordinary dimensions. It was intended to reach an impressive height of around 121 meters, making it one of the biggest rockets ever envisioned. At its widest point, the rocket measured 22 meters in diameter, significantly bigger than the Starship 4.0, which highlights the sheer scale of the Sea Dragon. The rocket was designed to weigh a mass of 40 million pounds, that's 18 million kilograms, when fully fueled and could deliver up to 550 metric tons into low Earth orbit, making Sea Dragon potentially the biggest rocket ever planned, surpassing even the mighty Saturn V, which was used during the Apollo missions. Unlike conventional rockets, Sea Dragon was intended to be constructed in a dry dock, a lot like a ship, which further emphasizes just the scale of such a project. Once finished, the rocket would be fueled and towed out to sea, far enough to ensure safety from any possible hazards during launch. To bring the rocket to a vertical position, a ballast stage would be filled to stabilize it before takeoff. Sea Dragon would then launch while partially submerged, a design feature that would have minimized the stress on the rocket during the initial liftoff. One of the most ingenious aspects of the Sea Dragon design, aside from its massive size, was its emphasis on reusability, a revolutionary concept for the time. The first stage would have been equipped with an inflatable aerodynamic decelerator, which would have slowed the descent and allowed the stage to safely splash down in the ocean. Similarly, the second stage would have also been recovered in a comparable fashion. Both stages then towed back to the offshore facility where they could be refurbed and reused for later flights, a principle that SpaceX has championed with its Falcon and Starship rockets today. Despite the groundbreaking nature of the Sea Dragon, the project never left the conceptual stage. In the 1960s, there was a little demand for such an immense rocket. NASA's Saturn V was already more than capable of fulfilling the needs of the Apollo program, and the U.S. military had expendable rockets like the Atlas or Titan for launching satellites. 
With the cutbacks to the space program that occurred in the mid-60s, the Sea Dragon concept was shelved indefinitely. Had NASA been given the green light to send humans to Mars after the Apollo programs, however, a super-heavy launch vehicle like Sea Dragon might have been justified. It could have provided the immense capacity required for such a daring mission. Could something like the Sea Dragon be developed today, given modern rocket technology? An analysis by Citizens in Space suggests that the price of building a modern Sea Dragon would be $22 billion in modern dollars. The trick to making such a rocket economical would be a flight rate of somewhere between 12 and 24 launches a year. Unfortunately, no conceivable space effort would justify a super rocket capable of putting 550 metric tons into LEO in a single launch flying that often. While the Sea Dragon may no longer fit into the current trajectory of space exploration, its potential was nothing short of extraordinary. It could have launched the equivalent of an entire ISS in a single mission. It had the capability to send all the necessary parts of a Mars-bound spacecraft in one shot. The number of people and the volume of cargo it could deliver to the moon would have been immense, potentially revolutionizing human presence in space. It could have transported large-scale infrastructure, bases, or factories directly into orbit. After all, the Sea Dragon remains a beloved relic of aerospace history, a fantastic concept that, while impractical in its time, pushed the boundaries of imagination. It may now live on in the realm of sci-fi, appearing in works like For All Mankind, but its grandeur is hard to forget. What would it have been like to witness such a mighty rocket emerging from the sea and ascending to the stars? Though its construction was never realized, the idea of Sea Dragon continues to inspire those who dream of a future where humanity reaches beyond its earthly bounds. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks for being with us, and see you next time.